Well, my goal for this time on stage is also to convert your thinking into Mobike being the best computer you've ever seen in your portfolio. I'll try my best to do that. Let's get a little bit of the history of Mobike here, which uh, is a very short history, actually, because the Mobike has not been around that long. No, uh, the company was created in January 2015, and we started operating in Shanghai in, on April 22nd, 2016. Okay, and you're now a unicorn company, right? It would seem so. How, how much have you raised all together? About a billion USD. One billion USD. Wow. Um, so you've been here in New York how long now? One or two days? I landed uh, sometime in the past 24 hours. Sometime in the last week. Sure so jet lag. He does not know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think about the city bike bike sharing program here? Do you have I a love chance it. to look at it? Yeah, of course. I used it a long time ago. So I, I, I grew up in the U.S. I'm originally French, but I grew up in the U.S. Uh, spent some time in Florida, spent some time in Massachusetts, and I've been in China since 2010. And so I did go to Washington and try the, the uh, capital here, <coughs> and I did try city bike here. Um, it's great. I mean, it's fun. Who doesn't love to ride a bike? Could um, Mobike work here in New York City? From uh, the company's vision point of view, which is to help people to have reliable, affordable, and convenient short commutes, uh, the answer is a yes, because although city bike is quite popular, uh, sometimes you go to a station and you can't find a bike, or sometimes you have a bike and you return to the station and then you're just stuck because the station is full. So in cases like this, I think people would love to have a mobile bike that is ready to use. So it, is it what's holding you back from some of these? I know Mobike has gone very international now. How many markets are you in? Including China, 12. 12 markets already. So, what's holding you back from some of these other markets? Is it regulation? I mean, is, and also in China, how, uh, on the regulatory theme, uh, how are you dealing with the regulations in China? I first of all, I wouldn't use "holding us back" okay. that word. I just say that, uh, like a, a an Uber exec once said, you don't turn up on every other corner of the earth overnight. You rather you work your way through a list of priorities. And I feel like that's very much the approach we're taking to things. Uh, there are a number of cities that need a mobile, but then we can't go to everywhere at the same time. So we're working with local governments. So local government support is a very strong criteria in the way we deal with the uh, internalization. So if a government is super excited to have us next month, then that'll be a good criteria for us. And also definitely some analytical criteria like density and population and smart food penetration and, and more, more data analysis like this. So it's just working our way through priorities. Okay, so is it true that Mobike is turning some profits already in some operations? The path to profitability is very clear uh, and we have a very exciting period of growth ahead of us, so that's what we focus on right now. Okay, I've heard uh, talk that a Mobike and Ovo may merge. Is there any, I have any truth to that? You have not heard that? <laughs> that he's never heard that. <laughs> I just landed this yesterday, though, so I don't know. I don't know. Right. <laughs> Gary, I think Gary just said that was a good response. <laughs> uh, Gary, do you have any questions for um, Florian? I think you have to turn your mic on. So, when, when you looked at um, when you looked at what you were going to do going to the next position, you looked at mobile. How did you decide that that was the right place to go? That, that was, this was the right position? Because going back to the earlier discussion, you're working in a Chinese firm and as a foreigner. And how have you found that? And, and how did that, did you, is it the way you anticipated it when you made that decision? You mean compared to my, you mean compared to my, uh, <laughs> compared to my previous job? Yeah, just how you made the decision to go to mobile in your, your, your previous job, yeah, from your previous job, et cetera. Uh, <laughs> so before Mubei, I uh, so again I've been in China since 20 to, since 2010, and in 2013 I partnered up with a couple of other French guys to do a, a startup that was a SaaS business model in energy management. So we were servicing large international companies in a retail, hotel uh, spaces that have a big energy bill, and then we provided that software to them. Uh, while raising our first round of funding, we put together a board of directors and Xia Yiping, Zhou Xia, the CTO and co-founder of Mobike, was one of that person on the board. So that's how I got to learn about the solution the first time. 
And um, as I told the story just a bit earlier, early 2016, when I started to meet with Joe and have regular meetings with him for another nonprofit that I'm running, after the meeting was over, I would always ask him, like, uh, are you going to walk back to the metro and, and be on your way? You want to walk together? And he was always like, uh, no. I was like, sorry, did you drive here or something? No, I didn't drive here. And, and he wouldn't tell me. So a couple of meetings went by, and then maybe the third or fourth meeting, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll show you. And he brought me to the, the bike. That was still the prototype, so it wasn't our, our, our specially designed bike. It was, it was a more of a normal bike onto which we had slapped the, the lock and the technology, and he showed me the lock open. And to finally answer your question, in my brain, it was, it was quite easy. I didn't think about the billions that we could raise, or I didn't think about the, the dozens of countries that we could go to. If I see something like that again now, I'll think about those items. But at the time, it was just about the pure joy and like the sheer emotion that I had when I heard the lock open. And I know it sounds cheesy, but it's the truth. It, it is the truth. It's because like the, the minute before, you're a pedestrian, and then the lock opens, and now you own a bike for however long that is, half an hour, two hours, or whatever. You get freedom, like instant freedom. And that feeling, that emotion, is what motivated to me to join the company more than anything. And the second thing is the fact that it was fully Chinese, because again, the previous company was like four French guys, which is great, but uh, French guys. And, uh, <laughs> and this one was like 36 Chinese people. So it's like, all right, let's do that. That sounds like fun. So, the sharing economy has clearly taken off, and uh, does Mobike have any ambition to go beyond bikes? Um, so our CEO mentioned at a Fortune forum, I think a couple of weeks ago, that he was looking into more than bikes, because our sweet spot is one to three miles, so first and last mile, short urban commutes. Uh, that can make up a large part of the total commutes that happen in the city every day, but that's obviously not everything. Uh, so if you think of Mobike more as a platform, then why not add more commuting options? And he said he was he was thinking about it. Like scooters and tricycles and <laughs> <laughs> skateboards. <laughs> skateboards. Okay. Uh, I, I don't. I, I can't confirm anything. But again, Pites. like I. Bikes. <laughs> Drones. Drones. <laughs> um, the, I, I often say the bicycle is like a tool, and we chose that because it's quite universal, and most people know how to ride one. And whether you're in China or in, or in France or in New York, that people know what a bike is. It feels familiar because we all rode one as a kid. So that's the tool we chose. But the real idea is solving first and last mile. So it, it could have been something else, and it might be something else in the future.